Earlier this week, I spent 24 hours in Australia's capital city of Canberra. And in that time, I decided to do a little 24 hour Polaroid challenge. So with me in my bag, I took my Polaroid SLR 680 camera and two packs of fresh Polaroid 600 color film. So in this video, I'll be showing you the 16 photos I took in that 24 hour period. Now I was a little nervous about taking my Polaroid film through the x-ray machine at the airport. I hadn't done it for a long time. There's new sort of x-ray machines rolled out all over Australia. So yeah, I wasn't sure if they would do a hand inspection of my packs of Polaroid or not. But I went to the airport and I had a little bag with my 35 mil film in, as well as two sealed packs of Polaroid. And before I'd even finished asking my polite request for the airport security staff to hand check the film, they'd just taken it off me whisked it down the end, had a look at it and gave it back to me. So there you go, the first hurdle was overcome. I had my camera and my film ready for Canberra. So when I arrived in Canberra, it was actually really chilly. It was only 14 degrees Celsius, which is, let me think about that. I think it's like mid to high 50s in Fahrenheit. It had actually been double that temperature here in Brisbane. It had been 28 degrees, which I think is in the 80s. So yeah, it was really quite a temperature difference. I had, as well as this quite big bulky camera I was carrying around in my hand, I also had two 35mm cameras, so I had my Olympus Mu 2 loaded up with Lomo 800, and I had my Ricoh R1 loaded up with Color Plus 200. So there'll be another video coming probably in three or four weeks with the photos I took on those two cameras. But today, it's all about the Polaroid. So I kind of did this video in response to a couple of comments I've had on my YouTube channel. People are saying, hey, we'd love to see a video of you walk around with your Polaroid, taking photos and seeing the results instantly. Now, as you know from, if you've watched this channel before, I don't really do those videos where you follow someone around taking photos and then you see the photo on the screen. Being someone like me who hasn't got a support staff, I haven't got an AV crew behind me, they're actually, I actually find them quite hard and quite difficult to do without lugging a tripod with me everywhere. So in this video, I'll be showing you a little bit of B-roll footage of Canberra, and I'll be showing you the finished Polaroid prints as well. So first, a little intro about this camera here. This is the Polaroid SLR 680. I love this camera. I bought it maybe six or seven years ago. I had to get it from the United States where it was made. Back then, I think including shipping, it was around 250 US dollars from memory. I could be wrong, maybe it was 250 Australian dollars. I really can't remember, but it wasn't that expensive. These have shot up in value recently. So yeah, they're actually very expensive now. Um, so it's a folding camera, a bit like the SX70. You do that and you put the little thing there, the lug strap there. Uh, it has beautiful sonar autofocus there. You can see the sonar autofocus. It's got a flash which you can turn on or leave off. Hopefully I've got, hopefully I've got no film in there. I haven't just wasted $4. No, we're all good. So it really is a beautiful camera. It is one of the best uh, SLR Polaroid cameras ever made. I love this camera and I actually have two of them. And I took one of them down to, camera, to Canberra with me, not to camera, to Canberra with me. Now being an SLR, I absolutely love this camera. You look through the viewfinder, you half press the shutter and the lens will sort of go back and forth and it'll show you what you're focusing on and then you can take the picture. I really love this camera. It is by far and away my favorite Polaroid camera. Even though the SX70 is a classic, even though I love some of the rigid body 600 series cameras, this for me is the Polaroid GOAT. Now I will be doing a review of the camera on this YouTube channel very soon, but if you can't wait, go back into the Matt Loves Cameras podcast archive, or just go to mattlovescameras.com. I've actually done a written review and also a podcast review of this camera before, if you can't wait for the video review. Now another reason why I love this camera is because you can actually turn the flash off. A lot of Polaroid cameras, you can't do that. You can't turn the flash off, but this one here, you, there's actually a switch and you can decide whether you wanna use the flash or not. Now, it's actually really versatile in that way, but it kinda of makes things a little bit more difficult sometimes, as we'll find out through the course of this video. So I started walking around Canberra around two o'clock. I had the afternoon off, had the city to myself. This is great, beautiful sunny weather, a little bit chilly. I had a jacket on, as I said, with my two 35 mil cameras in, and I had to lug that big Polaroid around in my hand because I didn't take a backpack with me. I was also wearing shorts, um, being a Queenslander, we wear shorts all the time. When I got down to Canberra and walk around in shorts, I had a few people look at me like, you're a weirdo wearing shorts in Canberra, but that's okay, I, you know, I can put up with that kind of thing. So I took two packs of film with me. I took the white frames and I took the color frames. 
I loaded up the color frames first for a very important reason, and that is because I just by chance I found out that there's a spring festival on in Canberra just a couple of days started before I got there called Floriade, and Floriade is a beautiful spring flower carnival. So I thought, yeah, flowers are gonna look really good with the color frame. So I loaded up my color pack and I went walking. So here is the first shot from the color pack of film. Beautiful trees in Canberra. There's a lot of trees out at the moment with their blossoms and flowers out. It looks very, very pretty. Uh, I don't know if they're peach flowers or plum flowers or what they are, uh, but yeah, really nice sort of white yellow flowers here. And then looking up at a building behind it and the blue sky behind. So straight off the bat, I really love this, this picture. Unfortunately, you never know what color frame you're gonna get. Like I wish you kind of knew it was gonna be an orange one because I probably would have taken a different picture. Uh, but yeah, this, I really like this picture. So first picture, a success. The second one, I was wandering around for quite a bit. There's a lot of roundabouts in Canberra and a lot of very similar looking buildings. And I thought, yeah, the buildings aren't really inspiring me that much at the moment. So I thought I'd go head down to that Floriade in the, in the park to see all the flowers. And on the way, there were these pink chairs outside, like a, I think it was like a sushi kind of restaurant. And yeah, look, this picture's okay. It's probably a little bit bright. I wish I'd taken maybe a slightly different composition. I actually also took this with my 35 mil cameras, so I'll be interested to see how they turned out. This picture is okay. I'm not that big a fan of it. The next four photos I took at Floriade, and there were just thousands, like tens of thousands of flowers there, tulips and all these beautiful, amazing flowers. Like I don't even know the names of the flowers. But the first one here was tulips. I love tulips, they're my favorite flower. And I saw these ones here, the yellow and the red one, or yellow and pink ones. And I wanted to sort of focus on one of the tulips here and get the rest of the scene sort of out of focus, which is something you can do with the Polaroid SLR 680. And it kind of has been achieved here. You can sort of see those flowers in the front are in focus and the rest is a nice soft blur, but it's very bright. You know, using 600 speed film in the middle of the day on auto settings. You know, I wish I'd used the darken dial a little bit here because it's just a little bit too bright. And by the time I realized, I put the picture in my pocket and walked away because it does take, you know, 10, 15 minutes to develop. Uh, by the time I'd sort of realized I was a long way from that area and I didn't go back and take another one. But yeah, so I look, I like this picture, but you know, in retrospect, gee, I wish I had my SX70 on me for taking this one. The next one is some more pretty flowers. I don't even know what flowers these are, but they look really nice there. Really nice and red and pink. And you've got the sort of the background as well of some other flowers in the background. Again, I like this one, but by the time I got this out of my pocket and saw it, I realized that, yeah, this is also kind of bright. So by this stage, I'm thinking, right, so next for the third shot at Floriade, I'm gonna have to use a little bit of, you know, take a different tack here and do something different. So for the third image, I actually kind of learnt my lesson a little bit. I put the darken wheel, light and darken wheel into action and I got this one. And this is probably, probably my favorite image actually of the flowers. I think this one looks really nice. You've got those two sort of pinky orange flowers in the middle there, surrounded by the white and the green. And I think that one looks really nice. It's probably my favorite flower one. The last one again is tulips. Now this one looks really nice, but I actually took this with the flash. Now, of course, if you take it with the flash, it doesn't mean you're cheating or anything. I just feel like I, I know I took it with the flash and so I don't rate it as highly for some reason. That's kind of my weird logic. But there's actually some very strong backlighting here going on. I was sort of facing the sun as the sun was going down. And I felt like, hmm, I don't think this is gonna turn out well unless I use the flash. Of course, a lot of Polaroid cameras, they are made for flash photography. You know, a lot of the rigid body 600 series cameras, you can't turn off the flash. The whole thing is designed around using the flash. So then sometimes when you turn the flash off with the SLR 680, like you may not get the result you think you'll get once you use the flash pretty much all the time. So this picture here, I think it's done a really good job. You can see, you can actually tell if you look closely that the flash has fired and those tulips at the front look magnificent and the yellow tulips in the background look great too. So yeah, this is a close second for me in terms of my flower photography on that day. So then I got on a scooter. You know those electric scooters that cities have? I decided to get on one of them. Never been on one before. I was kind of a little bit terrified. I had a big meeting the next day, you know, and I didn't want to fall off one and get injured and end up in hospital or something like that. But I found one right near Floriade as a purple scooter and I had to work out how to sort of, you know, use it and all that, download an app and scan a QR code. It unlocks the helmet because helmets are compulsory here in Australia for scooters and bicycles. And so, yeah, it was actually, actually a lot of fun. It was not that cheap, I must say. It was about, 
I think I used the scooters maybe three or four times and it cost me like 20 Australian dollars, which is probably about 14 US dollars. But it was a lot of fun and I covered quite a few miles in my little scooter. So I went over the lake, there's a big lake in the middle of Canberra called Lake Burley Griffin. I went over the lake to the, the sort of the Parliament House side of Canberra. Went past Old Parliament House and then I really wanted to go to the, uh, the National Gallery, not the National Portrait Gallery, I keep saying National Portrait Gallery. I wanted to go to the National Gallery. Now when I got to the National Gallery area, it said that I couldn't park my scooter there, so I had to go way out of the way and dump my scooter so I could go into the National Gallery. So this picture here is outside the National Gallery of Australia. It's a really cool art gallery. It has some amazing uh, paintings and artwork in there, amazing indigenous artwork. It's got blue poles by Jackson Pollock, which was a very controversial piece of art that Australia bought in the 1970s for what was then an obscene amount of money. And it also has Sidney Nolan's Ned Kelly series of paintings, which I find fascinating. I love those pictures. They are, yeah, they sort of tell the story in a very pictorial way of the, the Kelly gang being the outlaws, you know, the bushrangers of Australia. So yeah, amazing, amazing images and, and pictures in the National Gallery of Australia. I highly recommend it. So this Polaroid was taken outside. Look, I like it. It's, it's a little bit dark in some areas for my liking. I mean, I think if I'd used the lightning wheel and lightened it up a bit, you know, if I took another one, you know, some other areas the image would be overexposed. So look, I think it's done a good job. Uh, maybe not quite turned out exactly how I imagined though. And the final image I took with the color frames was this one here. Uh, to be honest, it's pretty boring. It's just some trees with a nice sky. I don't know, I don't know what I was going for here. I thought it might look a bit different or a bit nicer. Look, it's okay, it's turned out nice, nice exposure, the colors look great. It's just kind of boring, I think. So I'm, I'm kind of regretting taking that one. If you're enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment and tell your friends. And there's also details in the video description on how you can buy me a coffee if you really love my content. Thank you so much to the latest two people, wonderful, wonderful people who bought me a coffee, Craig and Matthew. Thank you so much. So after my trip to the National Gallery, I decided, I'd finished my pack of color frames and I decided to load up some beautiful, just regular white frames. I actually saw some beautiful parrots here as well. That's one thing about Canberra, there's so many birds. Like I saw these beautiful red parrots, I saw these beautiful green parrots, I saw galahs, cockatoos, all sorts of really cool birds. So the first image I took on my white frame, regular white frames, was this kind of ball suspended in the air outside the National Gallery. Now there's a bit of B-roll footage here, you can see it looks really cool. Um, the angle I took this at, it's straight up, it looks kind of boring. I don't know, I don't know what I was thinking, I don't know why I thought that would make a good photo. Uh, the colours look great, the exposure looks great, I just don't think it's particularly great. I wished I'd included some of the building in maybe or something like that, but you know, you live and learn. So after that first photo, I walked a little bit further and then I discovered there was a little group of scooters. So you can park your scooter outside the National Gallery of Australia or maybe some people had dumped their scooters there and they weren't supposed to, but I picked up a scooter from there and I decided to head back to the hotel. And so then the first image I took on the way back was this one here. Along Lake Burley Griffin, there's like a walkway and there's all these flags, like it looks like there's flags of all nations there. And so I took this picture here, uh, some cool flags in there. Didn't, like, I don't know, I thought it might turn out, like the colors and stuff look great. Again, it's just my composition here. I sort of took the image and thought, mm, it doesn't look that good an image. I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, so again, I felt a little bit disappointed, but I kept scootering on back to the hotel. Now scooting back alongside the Lake Burley Griffin, I come across this scene, these beautiful, beautiful trees, sort of backlit by the, the glowing afternoon sun. Look, I think it looks like a, you know, it's a good exposure and it looks nice. It's just not an amazing Polaroid, unfortunately. You know, it hasn't got some kind of, you know, banger look to it. There's no sort of central focus of the image, just a mass of nice trees and flowers. So again, I was a bit disappointed with my composition choices, but hey, you know, like I said, you live and learn. When I got back to the hotel, right near my hotel door, I was on the second floor, right near the hotel there was this like hot red curtain with the sort of sun coming in. And I actually saw it when I went out, uh, before I went out that day. But when I got back, the sunshine was coming through the window and it looked really cool. So I decided to take a picture of this sort of red retro curtain with the sunset, uh, with the sun coming through. And I love this image. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. And so, you know, look at it here, you've got the nice tones here of, the, of the, the curtain, the red curtain and the yellow sun coming through and the shadows. I really like the shapes on this one. So this is one of my favorite Polaroids of the trip. 
The next morning I went out at 10 to 7 in the morning very early, went to go get a coffee at a little cafe. Unfortunately they were closed, they said they don't open until 7.30 which I was kind of shocked, well, they were not open at 7 o'clock in the morning, kind of weird. Anyway, so I just took this photo here. I dialed it down a little bit for darkness wheel, uh, which I hadn't but I did. I was worried that the white building there would kind of be blown out a bit. I think it's probably a little bit underexposed, so it, it looks okay though, you know, got the nice green tree there and the sky and the building. Uh, but still, maybe I hadn't, I shouldn't have darkened it a little bit. And the last three photos. I had three photos left. I didn't want to put the Polaroid through this security at the airport with film still in there. I wanted to finish off this pack. And plus it was part of my challenge, right? I had to shoot two packs in 24 hours. So um, the buildings in Canberra are all very much the same. They're all sort of, you know, five, six stories, all sort of glass or concrete and there's pretty trees everywhere, but as you can see, I've already taken loads of photos of flowers and trees. I was kind of over it. I was looking for something different and interesting to photograph. Now, luckily the hotel I was staying at, it was a very, very cool hotel, and it had this kind of like a walkway going up with this chandelier. Uh, and it had really nice light in the morning there. Look, this image looks okay. I don't think uh, in this particular image, I've sort of captured all the glory of the staircase and how it looked. I've also taken this on 35 mil, so it'll be interesting to see how that turns out. The final two pics here taken in the hotel, I absolutely love though. So this one, I knew this would be a banger when it came out of the camera. When I was just taking it, it looked like a really nice scene. You've got these kind of retro sort of bottles and sort of wooden sort of uh, sideboard and lampshade. And I think that image looks absolutely fantastic with the morning sun sort of streaming in there. It looks really, really cool. It could almost be from like, you know, the 70s or something like that. I think I really love that photo. And the last image is like a nice lounge area in the hotel. I had my breakfast and then I took this one here with the final shot of Polaroid. Again, I really like this. I really like the shapes and the sort of the, the sun sort of streaming in and the sort of retro furniture and the cool vases and that kind of thing. I've just looked through all of my Polaroids, all 16, and I reckon I got eight good shots out of 16. Maybe nine, but we'll, we'll settle for eight. About a 50% hit rate. And that's the thing about Polaroid film is that, I don't know, sometimes I feel pressured to take, you know, every single photo that comes out of my Polaroid camera, I feel like it should be a banger and I put a lot of pressure on myself. Because it costs about, you know, three, four Australian dollars every time I press that shutter. And I feel disappointed sometimes when I take a photo and it's a bit boring. Um, I, I feel like, what have I done? Why have I taken that photo? I'm an idiot. But that's the thing, like when I take a roll of, you know, shoot a roll of 35 mil film, not every single photo on that roll is an amazing photo, right? You know, I'd be lucky if I got 15 photos on a roll that I love. And so that's the thing about Polaroids. I think you've got to shift your mindset sometimes. You might only get, you know, 40 or 50% of photos coming out of the pack that you absolutely love. The others, you know, there's always room to learn from mistakes you've made from those other images. For me, the images that I love the most are the ones where there's really nice rich colors, where the subjects are quite close to the camera. You know, when I'm taking photos of things that are quite far away, I don't, I never think they actually work out very well with Polaroid. So to me, yeah, things that are quite close, like the vases, or like some really flowers close up, or you know, uh, the tree, the tree was quite close with the building in the background. I think photos like that work really, really well. Other ones where, you know, it's just a, like a mass of trees or that ball in the sky photo, yeah, they're kind of boring and they, you know, they turned out fine in terms of their exposure and the film quality was great. I just don't think they're great images. And that's the thing, you've really got to, when you shoot Polaroids, you've got to learn from your mistakes and work out what to shoot and what not to shoot. All of the film I shot for this trip was from my recent Polaroid purchase. I did a live video on this channel about that recently and I bought 500 US dollars worth of Polaroid which will hopefully see me through for another 12 months or so. That's it for this video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment.